With the recent launch and successful deployment of the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomy and astrophysics has garnered a lot more attention than usual. I'm not just drawing this conclusion out of the blue. I've seen more and more content on the internet on the topics of astronomy and astrophysics, and even personally in my own life, I found myself in an increasing number of conversations with individuals talking about astronomy and astrophysics whom I wouldn't necessarily be having those conversations with before. In these conversations, one common question comes up, which leads me to believe there's a really bad misconception about telescopes out there. That question is how are we able to determine so many different things about our universe simply from images? And that's where the misconception comes up. Telescopes do not just gather imaging data. And I hope to clear up this misconception by talking about the three main types of data that all telescopes gather. Before going any further, telescopes gather a wide range of different kinds of data, but the three that we're going to cover today are just the three main pieces of data that all telescopes will gather. I should also preface that I'm not talking about the telescopes that you may set up in your backyard and look through an eyepiece to see out into the universe. I'm talking about scientific missions, either ground-based or in space, that are used for scientific purposes. Now let's start with the most obvious and the main part of our misconception, imaging data. Imaging data is created through the pixels on our detector. Pixels are basically just different squares, different parts of a grid that make up our entire detector. When a photon or a particle of light comes off of our source and hits our detector on the telescope, the exact pixel that was hit is recorded. Depending on the number of photons or particles of light that hit that particular pixel will tell us how light or dark that pixel needs to be compared to the rest of the pixels. This is what leads us to producing great images. The more pixels we have, obviously, the better the resolution. Contrary to what you might think, all telescope images actually originally come in grayscale, black and white. We can either use filters or computational techniques to produce colored images that you may be seeing distributed throughout the internet. Obviously, imaging data is very valuable because it allows us to physically be able to see some of the different things that are going on in our universe. Outside of imaging data, there's also spectral or energy data that is gathered. Spectral data is pretty simply just measuring the energy level of the photons that are hitting our detector. So each time a photon comes and hits our detector, along with the coordinates of this particular pixel that was hit, this energy reading is also recorded. This allows us to do something called spectral analysis. By looking at a spectrum, we can look for and see different features from different elements, either absorption or emission. We can then use very advanced computational techniques to determine different parameters from these different absorption or emission lines. One such example of this is the inner edge of the accretion disk of a black hole. So if you've ever seen an image of a black hole, you'll see the disk going around the black hole, and we can determine what this inner edge of the disk is, and that's very valuable because of something called the event horizon that's tied to the black hole. The event horizon is the point at which light cannot escape the black hole's gravity. And so this is very valuable because it can help us determine or put some constraints onto what that event horizon actually is. The last main type of data that all telescopes will gather is arguably the simplest, and it's actually the type of data that I specialize in analyzing. That is timing data. Every single time a photon or particle of light hits our detector, a timestamp is recorded for the exact moment in time that that particular photon is hitting the detector. So now we have the coordinates for our image, the energy for the spectral data, and a timestamp for the timing data. The timing data is very valuable because it allows us to understand things like orbits. It also allows us to look for exoplanets. 
This is done through something called a light curve, where we can plot out the amount of light that is hitting our detector over the course of the observation. If we see a dip in the light curve, that generally means that something is making that particular object dimmer. And if you think about it, if we're looking at a star and a planet is passing in front of it, as small as it may be, it will make that particular star look a little bit dimmer. And this is actually how the TESS mission searches for exoplanets. But it's not just the orbits and the exoplanets that we can see. We can see if one star is passing in front of another star, and even with some advanced computational techniques, we can actually measure the spin of different stars. I primarily study pulsars, and some pulsars can spin hundreds of times per second. And this data is what allows us to determine how fast these stars are actually spinning. Now these three types of data is also what actually helps determine what new missions are made and which ones aren't. Because realistically, we can only really make telescopes that will be able to gather two of these three types of data very, very well. Take for example, NICER. NICER gathers fantastic timing data. It also gathers pretty good spectral data. But the images that come from NICER look like this. That's because it's not built to be an imaging telescope. It's meant to gather timing and spectral data quite well. On the flip side, if we look at Chandra's high-resolution camera, it's designed to gather fantastic images. If we go and look for a good spectral mission, we might take a look at the New Star mission. And again, there are tons of other types of data that telescopes will gather. But those are the three main, most basic types of data that all telescopes will gather to some capacity or another. Some of that data will be really good, some of that data might be really bad. But it's not just images that we're using to study our universe. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.